There are ten dimensions. Number one, God created us in His own image, in His own likeness. Amen. Amen. That's the spirit dimension. And that is the base that God has established within our own spirit so that everything of heaven can come through our spirit into this world. Amen. 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 So that whatever you need to recreate your world, the material must come through into your spirit. Amen. The material must come into your spirit from your spirit. You speak it out, the material becomes a reality. The word became life. And life of that word is the light of man. And the light shines in darkness, and darkness has no power to overcome it. That's how it happens. Amen. Number two, God blessed us. We are created to be a recipient of God's blessing. All of us, every one of us. Whether we are pastors or members, whether we're male or female, Jew or Hebrew or Greek, free or barbarian, whatever. There's no dividing wall. Everyone is given the freedom. We are called blessed of the Lord. The nations of the earth will be called, will call us blessed. In us, all the blessings will begin to flow into all the families. You will become a blessing to every nation, every tribe. In you, all the earth will be blessed. Amen. God will make you a blessing to the nations of the world. So that's why he created us, not to be a curse, not to be a burden, not to be a liability. You believe that? Yes. Not to be a burden or liability or an inappropriate object in this earth so that we can become useful, essential equipments in the hands of God. Number three, God spoke to us. He spoke to them and he said to them, this is one of the greatest privileges we have. The God we have is the God who speaks, who communicates. He came in the cool of the garden and spoke to men. Amen. It's by, by, by speaking that he gave him life. Amen. By speaking, he gave him life. It's in, in, in the word is life. The word that we speak is spirit and life. It's by speaking that he gave him life, by communicating Continually, we, we call that man fellowship with God, but in the fellowship is the word was transferring. 1 John. 1 In the fellowship, word was transferring. 1 John chapter 1. It's important for us to know that because most of our fellowship is food. We fellowship around coffee, tea, cakes. That's why a lot of people come for fellowship. But that's not fellowship. Fellowship is not word, not food. It's word. It's what you give to one another. It's what you cook. Come bring with, bring a psalm, bring a revelation, bring a hymn. That's where fellowship begins. Without the word, there is no fellowship. What was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. And the life was manifested and we have seen and testified and proclaimed to you the eternal life which was with the Father and was manifest to us. What we have seen and heard we proclaim to you also so that you too may have fellowship with us and indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son. These things which we talk to you about we write. So that our joy may be made complete and your joy may be made full. Are you listening? So what was from the beginning? What was from the beginning? The word. In the beginning was the word. What was from the beginning? The word of life that was in heaven. We take that word and begin to communicate that word one to the other. And in doing that, fellowship takes place. The medium that allows fellowship to take place is the transfer of the word. God give me a word. God give you a word. We speak to one another. Because of the word medium transfer, there is fellowship. No word content, no fellowship. Amen. That's true biblical fellowship. It's not what you define, it's what God says. Amen. And when we do that, what happens, our fellowship is not only with one another, but with Jesus. And with the Father. And with the word of life. And with that which is eternal life. So, our fellowship opens out a very powerful connection with heaven. Amen. So as, as God begins to speak to us, He opens up what is eternal. Because the Word was eternal. It came from above. The Word of life. The eternal life. The eternal Word was in heaven. When the Word comes down, it allows us to have access to eternal things. 
Are you listening? Yes. Eternal life. But He gives us word. By the word, you are born again. You are born into an eternal dimension. You have eternal life in you. So you're, you have access to eternal life in heaven. By the word. Are you listening? Yes. So by the word, when I preach, preach the word of God to you, what happened? You receive the word and you become born again. The moment you're born again, what happened? You're connected to an eternal source. So that it, everything of eternity can come to you. So every day as God speaks to you, creates the cycle. So every time the word comes to you, it creates a, a, an opportunity for heaven to explode into your heart. So that's why we must be in a church that God is continually speaking, not a dead church. And we thank God for pastors who are continually speaking God's word. We must not, we must not fight it and not shut it down. If you don't like, it does not matter. Change. Don't try to shut them down. All right? Don't try to shut them down. Which prophets have they not killed? They killed the prophets because the prophets were speaking what God is saying. But if what God is saying coming to you, what's going to happen? Then heaven is connecting with you. You can connect with heaven. So the resources of heaven can flow through your life and come into your life. The eternal things can happen because the word is changing your spirit nature. So God is speaking. Amen? So thank God that he's speaking every day. Today when you hear his voice. So every day he can speak to you and I. Number four, the fourth dimension of the call of God upon our lives is that we need to be fruitful. What are you producing out of your relationship with God? Your relationship with the pastor. I'm very close to the pastor, you know. I'm very close to Papa. But what is coming forth out of that? It's not how close you are, it's what you produce. Amen? It's what you produce. If we, if we produce fruit, then that is worth. Because God is looking for an offspring. Amen. God is looking for a result. I went to, for tuition. I went for another tuition. I went for tuition. If all the tuition is producing e, E's in, and F's in your class, that's not worth going. Something is not right. We're wasting so much money in paying for tuition. But you're not producing the result. Something is not right. So the, some, some processes in between is going wrong. Either the teacher is not good or you are not learning or something is not happening at that moment. Are you listening? Okay, number four, sorry, number five, we need to manage and multiply. God gave us a dimension to manage and multiply. That's, that's the power to rule. Give you a little, you make a lot. Are you listening? Give you a little, you make you a lot. You know, in, in my town of Malacca, in Malaysia, there were Portuguese people. Portuguese people were good, good fishermen. So every afternoon, the, fish, the Portuguese fishermen will come near my neighborhood and begin to set up stalls. So they catch the fish early in the morning. In the afternoon, they'll come bring fresh fish, and they'll put on, on the ground, and they'll be selling. It's like an open market. And I get to know Uncle Aloysius. Aloysius, Uncle Aloysius, big fat fella. And after lunch, he's gone. That means he's asleep. So I became very good friends with Uncle Aloysius. So I said to him, I said, Uncle, you can go to sleep under the tree. I'll look after her. Tell me, so he tells me this is how much is, is in one catty. In those days, had no pound, it's in catties. So he said to me, this fish is 40 cents per catty. That one is 50 cents per catty. And so all the fishes. So when Uncle Aloysius go to sleep, I change the price. <laughs> I change it to 60 cents per catty. Not 40 cents, 60 cents. But I know how much it weighs. So I weigh all of that. Should be four catties for him. So his, his measurement is this amount. But I know I'm selling it for 60 cents per catty. So for every catty, I got extra 20 cents. So what I do, by the time, you know, when you're a student with the shorts in your, on, on, on your legs and singlet and you're selling it, and they all know you're a student, people feel pity. <laughs> because all of them are older people. I'm the student selling. They all know that I come from the school and, you know, and, and look at me and I'm a student. They must be thinking, sure, poor, unfortunate boy, he has to work hard for his own. So all my fishes will be sold. If within a short period of time, by the time it's 4.30, it's all sold. So by the time Uncle Aloysius is awake, I give him his portion, he gives me my portion, and I take the portion which... <laughs> so I have three portions, not double portion. When I came to church, I heard double portion, but I know there are three dimensions. You'd be surprised at the young age. I, you know, God wants us to manage. 
I remember I was only 11 years of age and I went to this old, older gentleman and his wife were sitting at the house and they had some rambutan trees. You know what rambutan trees are? Just trees, fruit trees. You know fruit trees? All right. When, when they, they flourish, the whole tree is covered with fruits. And if you don't pluck them in time, the birds would eat it, you fall to the ground and there's going to be tremendous mess. So I said to the older couple, I said, we will... We will uh, rent up this whole place. That means we will hire all these trees for ourselves. All the fruits on the trees is ours. What do you call it in English? That means you... Not rent, but you, you will harvest all the fruits and you will take over the farm at that moment of time and just give the couple whatever they, they, they are charging you for. So I said, that's what we do. The older gentleman said, we don't need anything. We want the garden to be clean. We cannot manage it. We cannot look after it. You do whatever. Just give us a few fruits and say, see, my teeth. He didn't have many, so he didn't need much fruit either. <laughs> so all he wanted was we look after the fruit trees and pluck the fruits, harvest the fruits, look after the trees and keep the garden clean. That's all he wanted. We had four rambutan trees, lots of fruits. So when we knew that that's what's going to happen next year, I went to all the shops. 11 years old, I went to the shops. I said, we can supply rambutans. This, how much we supply for you? How much do you buy? How much we supply for you? So by the time the fruit trees were all ready for harvest, I have all my market. 11 years old. God wants us to be that. He's not, nobody is going to put money in your hands. They want you to live for it. God wants to see whether you can manage with little how you multiply. So a lot of people want a lot, but they don't know how to manage, and that's why they lose everything. But those of us who know how to manage little, faithful in little, faithful in much, nobody is going to make you rich and millionaire by overnight. Even if you hit a lottery, you lose all your money because you came, it came by fluke, it will also move out in the same manner. As fast as it comes, as fast it will go. But those who learn to manage little, will want to learn how to manage much and more and more and more. Are you listening? Yes. And you'll be surprised. God, God is gracious to me by bringing me into an environment that was poor. I have very little things to depend on. I thank God for it. I thank God I was not born in a multi-rich multi home because I would not have the experience of, to handle the wealth and the blessings of God now because when you're in that kind of environment, everything is provided for you. You don't have to work for it. Everything is provided for you. So sometimes you receive a lot of things without realizing that you have to be responsible. But when you're young and you don't have enough, you have to be responsible for everything that comes on your way because if you lose it, it's gone. When you don't have enough money, if you lose that money, it's gone. I remember when I lost the $20, $22 that I had in my, in my pocket to pay for my school fees, my father chased me around the house to kill me. I had to do everything possible to escape. My mother was my defense. But you know, every lunch hour, he would get at, get at to with me. He said that $22, like $22 was like, that story went on for months. The anger of my father for, 20, for so many months was the $22 that I lost. I was careless. I was playing basketball. I took all the money and kept it under the rock. But somebody else saw it. So the rock was remaining, but the money was gone. <laughs> Are you listening? But that $22 was like a nightmare for me. For years, my father would use that, use that to fight me. And I would try to defend myself, but to no avail. No protection from that stone that's going to fly. But you know, God's been merciful. But I learned in all that experiences, I learned how to guard, how to protect, how to keep. How precious it is to have the little that can help sustain the life. I know how, how to hold things preciously, yet protect what I gain. So that's why whatever is given to me, I guard it. I keep it. Why? Because I know how important it is to keep what is needful for the future. Are you listening? Yes. One of our favorite stories in the, in the school at that time when we were primary school was the grass, grasshopper and the ant. You know the story, the grasshopper in the end, the grasshopper was very excited, always was partying. There was a grasshopper. The ants were always working. Even in winter, summer, they were always working. But in the summer, they work harder because winter is coming. They cannot do any work. They cannot gather any fruits. Yeah. 
any food. But the grasshopper does not gather anything. So in the winter, he became exhausted, tired, dying. He went to the ants to ask for help. And that's when the ants told him, we don't have enough for ourselves. Because you enjoyed the summer, and you were singing and dancing in the sun, but we worked hard, and you laughed at us. Today, this is your day of reckoning. And that sticks in my mind. So are you a grasshopper or are you an ant? I hope in the time of plenty, you will learn how to manage and multiply. It's not when you have no money. It's when God gives you money. What you do with it is whatever you have, you, that's the time to multiply. And when you start to multiply, you always will have for the winter days. Are you listening? So that's the call of God on every one of our lives. Everyone must ma multi manage and multiply whatever God gives to you. Your skill, your talent, your abilities, your technology. So that what, whatever you can do, even the, your technology, you must not just use technology to do what is needed. You must do t use technology to do what other people also need. Like you can help your pastor, you can help your church. Don't just know to, what to do with yourself and for your own need. Because God gives you that so that you can use that to serve the body of Christ. Are you listening? Like if you know how to do certain things, you, you can put in some extra help. You see the, the brochure in the church is not so well done, but you can do a better job. Avail your strength. You say, Pastor, I can do this. This is my work. Show them. Show them. Don't just say, all this work is lousy. I can do better. No, 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 no. You take the same brochure, retype it, and redesign it. What they did last week, you show them exactly how last week could have been better. I don't trust people who say they can do a better job. Until the job is better. Are you listening? I said, okay, this is last week's brochure. Do something about it. Show me exactly how this last week can be better. And they come up with nothing better, then I say, forget it. It's not a better work, it's just a different work. The fonts are different. It's the same thing. Just the size of fonts are different. What is the use of having different fonts? We want a better work, not just a different font. Are you listening? Yes. And so we've got to be very careful what people consider as better. No, it's not necessarily better. It's just different. Different and better is two different things. Are you listening? Yes. That's why I don't easily give myself to everything. All right, because people who tried everything, they, they use their talents and skill and give us the best, and somebody comes and rubbishes it, that's not good. If they, can, if they can rubbish it before you, they will rubbish it before them too. I said, prove to me you can do better. Take what we did last week, last week's brochure, take it now, change everything. Show me how last week could have been better. If you cannot do anything, then just be quiet. Let's move on with the rest. Are you listening? We must manage and multiply. Then we must, when we manage and multiply, we must also fill the earth, meaning we got to influence more and more. Amen. Increase our territory of influence. Touch more and more people with what we have. Are we hearing? Yes. Touch more and more people. Sometimes in order for us to influence, we must have extended hands, extended feet, extended lives. So I touch you, you touch others, somebody else, you whom you touch, touch others. So before long, one becomes two, two becomes four, four becomes 16, 16 becomes um, 64, and then before long, it gets on the multiplication number, it gets higher and higher. Are you listening? Yes. It's, it's essential. We must begin to see the dimension of growth so powerfully so that every time I touch you, you touch 10 people. Yeah. Every, every time God speaks to you if, you, if you tweet it or put it on your Facebook or tell 20 people, it's going to be powerful. Yeah. Every time you touch, every time God speaks to you, you send the message of what God speaks to you to 20 people. And that 20 cent to another 20 is 400. So one person is blessed, 400 people are touched. Can you imagine how powerful we will be? That's the power of technology. That's the power of influence. But you know what? We you said, you know, you put on the Facebook, uh, you know, I, 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 I went to this mountain. So what? Other people went to other mountains too. And then they will put up their Facebook. Oh, I also went to this mountain. So it's, now we are fighting mountains. No benefit at all. Facts and data that are useless. Whatever you put in your Facebook is not changing life. Then get the face out. Face it out. Are you listening? 
It's no use sending information. There's enough information for everybody. Are you listening? Okay, my baby is born. All right, that's good. That's a good news sent out. But you've got to describe the story to make it irrelevant to other people's life. You know, I, this is what happened. And the baby came and this is what happened and changed our lives and brought our families together. Put that all on the Facebook. You know why? That's a message. That's the good news. So you have facts but no news. God said, God has anointed me and he has given me the power to bring good news. Most of the thing in the Facebook is not news, it's just facts. Are you listening? Turn it into a news. Are you listening? Turn it into a news. Turn it into a good news. Send it, send it across to somebody that will inspire the afflicted. That's what you got to do. So if you want to be on Facebook, then qualify yourself to be on it. Be an evangelist. Be a person who knows how to sell the news. Don't just take facts. But they know how to write it in such a way that the facts become news. News that can change people's life. But you see, we have technology. Young people are on it every day. They spend at least an hour. Some people spend two hours on Facebook alone. Mad people though, but they do. Are you listening? You, you'd be surprised. I, I, I dare not ask you how many hours you spend on the internet. I fear I may get the wrong answer. But I can see many of you, when I first saw you on the first Monday night, I saw your face was square, I know. Looks exactly like your computer. Some of you are a bit flat, look like the tablet. Some of you have this look, hang look. Computers hang. I pray that you do something about this. Amen. So make sure that every data becomes a news that can inspire somebody. With a word, we sustain the weary. Write down number seven. The seventh dimension of the call of God this afternoon is to subdue. Fill the earth and subdue. Subdue. If you don't influence long enough, you cannot bring it under subjection. It's a continual influence that gives us the power to prevail. Subdue. To subdue, to put down, to bring under subjection. To pressure until it begins to bow. Subdue, to pressure until it begins to bow. To apply pressure until it begins to bow, until its knees begin to buckle, until it starts to bow. Yes. Are you listening? Yes. You've got to put your weight on it until it begins to bend. Put your force. Are we hearing? Yes. You've you got to do that. That, is, that subdue. Subdue means you keep on influencing, keep on influencing, until everything that resists you will begin to bend under pressure. And then you force it down into what you want. That's why we can take over any, any assignment, anything that happens in our life. Everything that is trying to fight us, we can put, put pressure on it rather than it put pressure on us. People are funny. When they have no money, they have pressure, financial pressure. When they have a lot of money, they're also under pressure. No job, they have under pressure. They have a job, they also have work pressure. Job or no job, they have pressure because it's the way you respond. There's a lot of people, they have married pressure. And those who are not married also have unmarried pressure. They are not married yet pressure. Are you listening? Those who have, funny, they have, those who have money, they have pressure. Because they have so much money, they have now they have put on CCTV uh, to protect the whole house. All the robbers are beginning to smell that they have money in gold and silver. They send raise up more dogs They're under pressure because they have money. But those who have no money also have pressure. Pressure to get money. For those who have money, the pressure to keep money. Those who invest, pressure to make sure the investment works. Those who don't have any money to invest, who are borrowing, also pressure where they can get money. Pressure is the attitude and the response to circumstances. Are you listening? Pressure is because you respond wrongly to the environment and to the circumstances. That's why pressure comes on you. Are you listening? Now, for those of us who are older... People go to Malaysia and go to some other parts of the world. Suddenly, there's a squatting toilet. You know what a squatting toilet is? Not sitting toilet. Squatting toilet means there's no, no bowl. 
That means you have to go all the way down. Are you listening? They, you don't stop halfway. Your lift goes all the way to basement. You hopeless people, you have no, Im no imagination whatsoever. So you have to squat all the way. And some, for some people, they cannot get up because the no knees are locked. Because they have never said. You, you know, when, when we did the School of Prophets, we asked, asked the people to sit on the floor. They can't. They can't cross their legs and sit on the floor. It's, it's almost impossible because you never tried it. It's like nightmare. This guy has come to torment us. Sit on the floor. And you can see them sitting like this and sitting them like this. And, you know, they're on the floor and they're sitting like this. Because they, if they get down, they, their knees are locked and they, they don't know how to get out. You can see how clumsy they are. They take the a whole drama to get them out. And people have to pull them out. Why? Because you have not practiced it. But for those who are able to practice ballet and so on, they can just sit down and get out. You'll be thinking like, so easy. You try. <gasps> and you're walking in the sideways. It's amazing. Subdue to put pressure. To put pressure until it begins to conform. And that's the power God gives to us. We're not supposed to be under pressure. We're supposed to be able to rise above every pressure and pressure, pressure. Frighten fear. Terrorize terror. Put death to death. How about that? Isn't that another level to live? So that instead of having pressure, we put pressure on pressure. That pressure begins to be under pressure. Are you listening? Yeah. Those who terrorize us are come under terror. Those who try to intimidate us are themselves intimidated. Are you listening? Yeah. It's important because this is the dimension God gives to us. Every one of us as believers, as pastors, as leaders, we have that dimension within us to subdue. Because God didn't create us to become victims. He created us to become victors. That's why don't tell me you're under pressure. Don't tell me you are di difficult. Don't tell me you're tired. You've got to learn to rise above this. Yes. Cannot be tired forever. Cannot be like lazy forever. I cannot make it. You know, I tried, but I, nothing works. You've you got to rise up, do something about it. Yes. Keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing. Everything can be done. Yes. Everything is possible. If you put enough effort into it, anything is possible. Yes. Are you listening? Oh, I, I, I try, but it does not work. I try to put off weight, but it cannot work. Then stop eating the sweets. Do something. Don't tell me it can't be done. It can be done. There's a way to find out. You've got to find out. Why is every, some people can, you can't. You must do something about it. You, you can't tell me it's not possible. My body is different. Stop lying. Your body is the same as everybody else's body. It was the same. When you were born, everybody looked the same. Given a fair chance. It's because a certain, sometimes, if it's chemical imbalance, then go sort it out medically. But something can be done. Are you listening? When I found out my hair was dropping, by the time I found out, it was too late. Because I didn't have any more roots. My hair, there was no more roots, so I could not put any nutrition. Because I didn't have the money too at that time. Because it's expensive to make sure that your hair is healthy. It's expensive. The roots are not healthy. So that's why my hair was dropping. And beside my grandfather and my grandfather on both sides, both of them were like Sean Connery. <laughs> it was all Sean. <laughs> all right. Sorry, I'm picking up on the British, but <laughs> are you listening? It was not easy. By the time I found out for the nutrition, they said, let's, let's put some nutrition on the roots. And they began to put the microscope and try to look for roots. There were no roots. So what is the use of putting all the fertilizer on where there's no roots? So I saved my money, but I couldn't save my hair. Are you listening? But when you realize that something is happening, do something about it. Oh, you know, my hair is falling off. Don't wait until it's the end of the world. Do something. Your teeth, my gums are swollen. Do something before all your teeth falls out. Yes. Are you listening? But people don't. They just say, never mind, never mind, never mind. Then you, you will mind. 
When you're combing your hair, ladies, you comb your hair, your hair is dropping. Don't say, oh, I have so much to contribute to the world. You won't have by the time you're 21. Are you listening? People are funny. They just don't want to act and arrest it immediately. That's why we cannot subdue because a lot of pressure comes upon us and we just conform to it, yield to it, and we surrender ourselves. One of the worst things you can do is have, have breakfast that is heavy sugar early in the morning because by afternoon you collapse. Are you listening? Everything is sweet in the morning. By the time you hit heavy sugar, you are, on, you are a sugar junkie. Your eyes is bright until the afternoon. When the sun gets brighter and brighter, your eyes get dimmer and dimmer. So by the time you're after, that's why the sugar rush into the body is, can be very destructive. One of the things you've got to try to do in your lifetime while you're still young is to make sure you're healthy. Yes. Subdue your body. Yes. Subdue your body. Buffet your body, not buffet. <laughs> Paul said, I buffet my body. It's called B-U-F-F-A-T. Double T. Are you listening? So the same spelling that goes for buffet. So sometimes we read, we read it wrongly because <laughs> Paul said, I buffet, I buffet my body. So everyone, $4.99, buffet, hallelujah. This is what Paul did. Paul didn't do that. He buffered his body, hid his body down until his body subject itself. Are you listening? It's, it's important, but we don't want to do that. We got to pressure it until it conforms to what we want. Your mind. Or you say, I, I cannot control my mind. Yes, you can control your mind. Do you believe me? Yes. I said, do you believe me? Yes. You think you can control your mind? Yes. A lot of people say, I don't know. I cannot control my mind. When I'm praying, I cannot concentrate. I'm telling you, you can concentrate. You want to, know, you want to find out how? I, you say, you want to find out how? Yes. Okay, close your eyes. Let me, let's, let's, let's try, this, try this exercise. Close your eyes. Hey, don't go to sleep. I'll throw my shoes at you. <laughs> close your eyes. I have discernment. My, sh my shoes are ready to fly. <laughs> are you ready? Yes. Okay, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think of a banana. No, not yellow, green. Have you got green? Yes. Not yellow banana, green banana. All right, put three apples on the right-hand side of the banana. Three apples. No, no, not, not green apples. I want red apples. Have you got to change the color? Yes. Have you got to change the color? All right, good. Okay, I want you to put some grapes, red grapes, on the other left-hand side of the banana. Have you got it? Yes. You sure you got it? Yes. All right, put some cherries. I like cherries, the red cherries. Have you got some cherries? Yes. Put the cherries around about, all around about. Put a lot of cherries everywhere. Uh, put more, put more, put more, put more. That's, have you got all the cherries there? Yes. That's good. All right, now I want you to put all in a basket. Have you got a basket? All right, put some cloth on it. Put a nice cloth. No, not the red cloth. Put a white cloth with blue flowers, white flowers. That's good, that's good. Small, small flowers on the cloth. All right, cover it all. Have you covered? Yes. You cannot see the fruits, right? Cover it all. Have you covered it? Yes. Okay, good. Look at me. Who told you you cannot control your mind? Who said you cannot control your mind? You can create anything you want. So who is in charge? The devil? No, you are the devil. It's true. You are in charge. You cannot tell me that you're taking over. If you hold the computer in your hands and things are coming into it, it's called virus. You have no control, it's called virus. And the reason why you have virus is because you have no antivirus. It's your computer. Why should somebody hack in? Yeah. It's because somebody is invading. You've you got to find an antivirus. You've got to find a way to block what others are coming in. So that's what you've got to do with the devil. You cannot allow the devil to cross boundary and come to where you are. Yeah. You have to devise your own security situation, your own security virus, sec security uh, software so that you protect all the different things. Yeah. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? So your mind cannot be infiltrated by the powers of darkness. You must guard it, protect it, shield it from every attack that comes from the side. Can you say amen to that? Amen. So you, you can control your mind. You can subdue it. You can bring it under subjection and use only information that is needed so that your mind will work with information you give. 
not with information that comes from anywhere and everywhere. Because your mind can trigger off very fast by other people's information. A lot of us are thinking what everybody else has wants us to think. Because we are scatterbrained. Somebody says something and you're thinking about something else. I say, don't think about a white elephant. Don't think about a white elephant. I don't say, don't think about a white elephant. What do you think, white elephant? And you'll be thinking, white elephant? That's what I ask you not to do. But you're thinking. Are you listening? So the moment I say something, I say, all right. You know, I say it about cars. You know cars? You know what cars? I'm saying cars. You know, your mind straight away thinks about cars. The whole file on cars. Some of you see different cars. Some see red. Some see black. Some see blue. Some see Ferrari. Some see Formula One. Some see, you know, some see some other cars. Some see Mini Cooper. Some of them see uh, four-wheel drive. All kinds of cars. Some of them see cars with huge wheels. Some of them see cars on top of each other. Some of them see cars in accident. You'll be surprised. The moment I say cars, I say, all right, cancel the cars. We talk about planes. Talk about aeroplanes, aeroplanes, aeroplanes. So what happened? Your mind straight away opens to aeroplanes. You, all the planes that you know suddenly appear on your mind. That's exactly what happens. Because the word I speak to you is like a search engine. The moment I press and I say cars, your mind will open up. That's why there are some trigger points from the outside that will trigger your mind. Sometimes it's words, sometimes it's pictures. Are you listening? You look at a car magazine. Straight away, your mind is going into the, into the magazine. And what's in the, in the magazine as cars will also hit your mind. And all the files on cars begin to open. So your mind can be triggered from outside. And that's why you need to, you need to subdue. Because they are coming invasion from outside to hit your mind. To make you think in a certain direction. To make you feel in a certain direction. Like you go into a place where you have things to buy, in a, in, a, in a shopping mall, for example, you are continually hit with advertisement. Somebody is dressing nicely, the model is dressed nicely, and you look at it and you say, oh, it's so nice, it's so nice. But the model is different from your body. It may look nice on the model, but what's nice on the model may not look nice on you, because the model has different color. Are you listening? It's different height, different shape, different body. And it may not suit you, but you look at it, it's straight away impressed. So everyone, they see things and they, it hits them. They don't know how to subdue it, they are subdued by it. So before long, they buy the things that they don't need. Are you listening? They buy the things they don't need. You, you begin to acquire the things you, you, you're not going to use for a long time. So before long, you have so many things like that. Oh, it's so cute, it's so cute, it's so cute. If you buy everything that is cute, you can start a mall. This earring is cute. This earring is cute. You only have two years. But you have 45 different sets of earring. Oh, it's so cute. It's so cheap too. It's so cute and so cheap. I'll just use it once. Madness. You'll be surprised. There's so many clothes in your, in your wardrobe that you have not used before. So many shoes that you only use once. And shoes are strange. Even the most expensive shoe don't last very long if you keep in the cupboard too long. Especially sneakers. Especially, if you don't use for a long time, it was meant to last for two years. If you use longer, if you use more often, it lasts longer. Trust me, because most of the shoes are made on my side of the world, not your side of the world. <laughs> we know your side of the world idolizes the shoes, That's, but we will have no business, so we made sure... We made sure it only lasts two years in your cupboard, but four years when you walk. It's true. The more you use it, rubber is like this. The more you use it, the more elastic it is. The more you don't use it, the harder it becomes. So if you want to buy track shoes, if you want to buy shoes that you are using continually for walking shoes and so on, use it more often because the more you use it, the more elastic it becomes, the less rigid it is. A. Hey, say thank you. Ha. Huh. I saved you two years in advance. Gave you, I even gave sh life to your shoes. <laughs> it's true because rubber is like this. Because rubber, the more you use it, the more elastic it becomes, the less rigid it becomes under, uh, under, under the heat. 
That's why in the, in the time of summer, you know, you find that your shoes begin to give way. I haven't used the shoe at all. That's precisely the reason. <laughs> but if you use it, it becomes better and better. Are you listening? Subdue. That's the power that we have. Amen? You and I have the power to subdue. Any pressure come along the way, we can hit it. If the ball is thrown at you, you can make a home run. Yeah. Are you listening? Yeah. If you are playing baseball, the, they throw the ball at you, or at, at the place for you to strike, you got to know how to strike it. But if you don't strike well, you'll be strike out. But if you strike well, it's a home run. Not only you save yourself, you save the whole team. Pressure is like this. If you don't do well, all of us in the team will suffer. Just one of you who are part of the music team. If your marriage don't work, then we suffer. One day you quit. Then we have to suffer. Because it's a team effort. Are you listening? It's a team effort. If we have 20 pastors put together, if one begins to suffer, others in the team will suddenly have a vacuum. Are you listening? That's why if, if you can handle the pressure, you can get the fastball going and you can get this guy out and move him forward, move all our team forward, then we win. So sometimes the pressure God sends to you is the deliverance for everybody because God knows you can handle the pressure. That's why he sent the pressure to you. Put the most difficult task on your life so that if you win and you hit it and you rise and you, you subdue it, then all the others will not be under the power. So don't ask yourself, why me? Because you are the only one that God thinks can, ha can make this happen. So when this thing happened to you, you rise and fight it and you rise above it and you destroy its power, then the rest of the others will become free. Are you listening? I, I, I can remember many, many movies that I've watched. Sometimes there's one rifle, rifle fire, sorry, machine gun fire coming from the place. All the people are getting killed. Can you imagine that? You can? All right. Imagination? Afternoon, afternoon sessions are hard. That's why I want your mind to think because if not, some of you will be, your screen will turn black. So there's, there's machine gun fire coming from the place. Everyone going out is getting killed. One person goes out and deals with that. What happened? The machine gun guy, the guy who's operating the machine gun is shot and destroyed and killed. What happened? All the others become free. Sometimes you're under pressure, not because of anything else, but because God allow you to take the difficult portion. And you must handle that. You must handle it for all of us, not just for yourself, not just for your faith, but because we are part of the team. You handle the pressure, you break it, others will become free. Yeah. Some families go through a difficult time because they are meant to go through the difficult times. Yeah. Why? Because God wants to break through. Yeah. When you break through and you subdue the work of the enemy, all the others become free. Yeah. Just like Joseph, he goes and suffers for 14 years, and when he suffers for 14 years, all his brothers became free. His father, the nations of the earth became free too. One man suffers, all of the others become free. Can you say amen to that? Amen. God has given us power like that to subdue. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Number eight, the eighth dimension of the call of God upon our life is to, exp is to have dominion. Yes. Dominion means come into a stature and position of power. Come into a Position and place of, what did I say? Come into a station, stature and position of power. Come into a stature and position of power. We have authority. We have authority to establish. Rule. We have authority to establish rule. When we are subduing is effort. When we have dominion is authority. When we are subduing is effort. That means to say when you are subduing, you are on wrestling match. You are on close combat. You are using a lot of force. But when you have dominion, you have authority. By the power of your words, you subdue, you cause things to bow. You are exercising dominion. Are you listening? When you are exercising dominion, it's become effortless. Because now you are in a position, you are in a stature, you have powerful 
Are you listening? When, when, you, when you are subduing, you don't have the position yet. So there's a lot of effort involved to get the job done. But when you're in a position of authority, it becomes easy. You just exercise dominion. Are you listening? All right, do this. Everybody do this. Okay, if you're a king, somebody would have brought us food right now. Some dancers would have come. You can do anything you want because there is nothing. You're nobody. But if you're somebody, you do it like that. Somebody will bring you fruit, fruits. Some dancers will come. Some pineapple will be served. Some ice creams will be served. But here you do it like that, nothing happens. Are you listening? That has to do with authority. You have dominion. If you have a position, you know when the king turns away from that person, the person is going to be hung. When the scepter is stretched out and, it, it, and you touch the scepter, there's, there's, there's favor. If you walk into the king's presence and he doesn't lift up the scepter for you to touch it, you are going to be out, of, out into trouble. That's why Queen Esther said, if I go, if I perish, I perish. But when she went in, the king Ahasuerus stretched out the scepter and she touched the scepter. It means he accepts her into his presence. Are you listening? Yes. It's important. It's powerful. All right, for you to remember this. Because God has given us, as you come up into a place and position of stature and power, you start to do less and less. There's less and less fight, but there's more and more authority. Are you listening? When you're young, you're struggling. You're binding this devil. I command you in the name of Jesus. I bind you. I command you and you and your host to be bound. And you're going for hours and hours and hours and hours. And you drink your coffee again. Go hours again. Bind the same devil. And make sure that you bind this devil. When you get older and older and your stature gets higher and higher, you say, in the name, before you say the name of Jesus, the demons run for their life. Because now they know who you are. Before they don't know. Before they don't know, they thought you're just like everybody. But when you rise up in stature and you carry a position of authority, their demons know you well. The moment you step in, they get out. The moment you enter in, they say, what business have we to do with each other? Our business is over. You can take over. We are leaving. Have you come to torment us before our time? Are you going to arrest us? Are you going to torment us? Is it time already for our punishment? That's what they asked Jesus. Are you listening? Yeah. But in the early days, they didn't know who he was. But when they knew who he was, they screamed. You are the son of God. Jesus said, be quiet. Yeah. But when they didn't know, they tr started to struggle with him. The moment they knew, anytime he entered, they manifest. Yeah. They were so frightened, they freaked out because this one was the son of the living God. Yeah. Yeah. Are we listening? Because they knew who he was. But when they didn't know, they began to do all kinds of stuff. Throw this person into the fire. But the moment he came on, on site, they ran for their lives. They left, the ter they left the territory, not just left the meeting. Are you listening? They left the territory. And it's important for you and I to remember the power to have dominion. Number nine, the dimension of the call of God upon our life is to expand. Expand. That means you not only have dominion, but you now and grow yourself into the territory. You expand. That means you grow yourself into the territory. That means you are in everywhere. Like if FCT begin to rise up and expand, you know what it means? That means all our people are in all the different domains. They are all in the right places. We are in the right, inside the infrastructure of the entire region in Tagavalan, yeah. Romans on, and all the four areas that we represent. We are everywhere. We are inside the infrastructure. Nobody can shift us out anymore because we are in. Yeah. We are right inside. We have expanded ourselves. We are not only inside the church, but we are inside in every infrastructure. We are in the farms. We are in the education. We are in the political arena. We have all our connections everywhere. Our roots are everywhere. You cannot pull us out. You cannot uproot us. We have expanded ourselves. Are we listening? So we don't have just one Pastor Heiner, but we have many other smaller versions of him. Rising into every different life. Every, every, everyone rising and taking on their own places. Are you listening? Yeah. Just that's what happened. Not only we have Christ, but we have Christians. 
smaller versions of Christ everywhere. So everywhere they turn, hey, this is like Christ, that's like Christ, this is like Christ, this is another Christ, this is another Christ. There's so many smaller versions of him everywhere manifesting through different, different bodies. When they look Peter, at Peter, James, and John, they recognize they have been with Jesus. They look like Jesus, talk like Jesus. It looks like they've been so influenced by Jesus, and Jesus is manifesting through them. Even though they don't know who is Jesus, but when they look at Peter, James, and John, they know they have been with Jesus. What was in Jesus is now manifesting through Peter, James, and John. By seeing Peter, James, and John, without Jesus, they can see the imp imprint of Jesus upon their lives. Are you listening? It's amazing. Are you listening? Yeah. And you cannot be with me for four or five days and don't have that impression come upon your life. You must go back and pray like me, talk like me, act like me, move like me, prophesy like me, minister like me. People said, oh, surely we know he has been with, with this man from Moa. Are you listening? Yeah. Why? That's, that's how. If you go into church and you're influenced by the presence of God, you walk out on Sunday morning out of your church, people must know you've been with God. They can smell you, they can feel you, they can sense you. Hey, these people have been with God. When this woman with the alabaster veil of ointment began to pour out the ointment upon Jesus, what happened? Wherever Jesus went, wherever she went, they associated them together. Because the smell was the same. Are you listening? And there must be the fragrance of God's presence upon your life. You cannot go to church on Sunday morning and walk somewhere else. People, people must say, hey, did you come from the presence of God? People must say that, have you come from church? Have you come from, from, from the time of worshipping? You look so happy. Have you come from a happy environment? You look excited. Have you come from an excited environment? You know, people leave the church looking miserable. Where did you go? Funeral. Are you listening? They come out looking strong because you have been to a place that has built strength into you. That's why it's good. It's good to go out to a gym and see. People coming out from the gym, looking tired, exhausted, walking out like this. You want to get there? You don't want to go there. You, you see them coming out strong, looking strong. The chest is out. They walk straight. You want to go because these people are walking the way you want to walk. Are you listening? If you go into the gym and you see these people coming out looking feeble, looking tired, tripping and falling down. You have to help all of them to the car. You don't want to go to the gym. Something is wrong somewhere. Somebody is killing them. Some tyrant is there. Somebody is electrocuting them. Somebody is tormenting them. But you see these guys coming out strong, carry the, the back in their hand, looking straight and looking tall, looking the way you want to walk out of the gym. You get attracted. Are you listening? Talk to me. Are you listening? That's one of your best advertisement. When people walk out of your gym looking good. Are you listening? Looking good, looking nice, looking strong, looking healthy, looking well, looking like everybody wants to look that way. Then it's a good advertisement. That's why they put the people, the, the gym must not have a back door. Everybody going in must come out the same, same route. So the people going in and coming out looks different. People watching that can observe that and that's the best advertisement. Are you listening? So God has given us power to expand. That means we fill every space, fill every domain, every territory. Next year when you come, I'm going to show you how to touch different domains. The political arena, how to prepare ourselves for the political arena, how to think in the way, not political science. Political science is just psychoing of the, of, of the philosophy of politics. But there is something far bigger. We've got to learn from Scripture how to act and rise above the governments of this world. You must be under God's government. You must understand God's government. You must understand God's law. You can't speak law to a world that is lawless if, unless you have the law of God in your hand. The law of God is the only law that can set us free from the law of sin and death. So there must be a law that is higher than the laws of this world. That's why Jesus said, the law says this, but I say unto you. That's Jesus entering in the political arena. He challenged their law by raising the law higher. You say, commit, the, commit adultery. But I say to you, if you look at a woman lustfully, you have already committed adultery. They, they threw their law away. They said, look, this is finished. <laughs> Ours, if we do, he said, if, even if we see, it's done. Yeah. We can't stand before this law. The law said, sir, we must, 
We must stone the woman committing adultery. Jesus said, anyone who has not sinned, cast the first stone. They say, we're finished. We cannot even practice our law. Are you listening? Yeah. So if you walk into the political arena, you have to have a law higher than what these boys have. The law of the spirit of life set us free from the law of sin and death. This is one of the reasons why a lot of politicians don't succeed because they don't have a law. They don't have a law that is higher than all their colleagues. So they bow to that law. Are you listening? Yes. That's why Daniel's law was supreme and higher. His law was open the window towards the east and pray towards Jerusalem. That's his law. It was a law in his life. He didn't care what, what, what other law is going to be passed. So they used that law to try to persecute him. He's him who was living by a higher law. Can the lower law persecute the one in the higher law? No, it can't. Because there's the one who gave the higher law is God. So God judged the matter and set him free. And what happened? All those who instigated were thrown into the fire. It will backfire. All right? That's what I'm going to show you. We can take over the world. We can change the political arena. We can. But not by studying them. It's not by studying them. The devil will not allow you to know all his rubbish and all his tricks. He will just show you how he can trap you. That's why I don't read things in this world. I don't get impressed with the way the world is and start to study it and think that this is the way to go. The devil has just sabotaged your strategy. Are you listening? You've got to find out from heaven. You've got to ask the Holy Spirit. That's why not everybody who is capable to enter that kind of arena. Your mind must think differently. You must learn to live by a higher law. You've got to learn how to touch God and know God's government, God's rule upon your life so that you know how to bring rule into the house. Yes. Amen. So we're going we're gonna to trust God for education. We're going to trust God for other aspects of life so that when we enter into the arena, we are more than equipped. Amen. Amen? Yeah. All right, let's go with the last one, number 10. The 10 dimension. Tonight, I'm going to show you the vocation. This is going to be interesting to find out what are, the, what are the dimensions God has called us in, in our calling, and what are the vocations available. Amen. Amen. How, to, how to pursue our vocation. What is our vocation? Sometimes there's permanent vocation, sometimes there's temporary vocation. Are you listening? Yeah. Paul's primary vocation was that he was a minister of the gospel. Temporary vocation was for a certain need. That was for, for him to build tent. He was a tent maker for a while in order for him to get resources so that he can get back to his primary assignment. Yeah. Are you listening? We've got to be very careful. Sometimes we do some part-time job along the way, but that's not our full-time. Yes. But we need to do that for extra resources, for other things. So sometimes we said, oh, pastors should not get involved in this and involved in the other. No, we should be. Yeah. Because sometimes we need to have some extra resources. Yeah. People are allergic. They said, oh, pastor must concentrate only on the ministry. Cannot do business. Then who is going to give the money? We can't be asking money from everybody all the time. Then at the end of the day, our testimony will be gone. Are you listening? Yes. And, it's, and it will be important. Let me give you one last dimension of the call of God upon our lives. The last one, number 10, is extend. E-X-T-E-N-D. Not expand, extend. Outside of your territory. Doing the same thing outside of your territory. To find new territories to do what you're doing. Extend. Doing outside your territory. To find new territories to do what you have been doing in the past. To do what you are doing today outside of your territory into new, new territories, new areas. To find another nation to change. To find another city to influence. To find another church that you can influence. So that what you are doing with your territory, you are doing it also in other territories. That's to extend. E-X-T-E-N-D. Are you listening? Yes. So every one of us who are called by God has these ten dimensions. Whether it's a pastor, whether it's a businessman, whether it's a politician, whether you're a student, you must think in terms of all these ten. That's because every one of us must think this way. Are you listening? Even if you're a student, you are supposed to extend. That simply means you've got to help others, begin to walk into other territories, begin to 
find extra subjects, subjects you never learned before. You learn how to acquire wisdom and knowledge into that. Don't say, I don't know. After, even after you sco- quit schooling, you have finished and you've gone to work, find out an online subject that you can learn. Go to two or three weeks, learn how to do some icing on the cake. Go and learn. What's wrong? Are you listening? Don't just eat cake and eat icing. Learn how to make it so that you can help somebody, so that you can train somebody. Learn to do that. <coughs> You'll be surprised what you can do. Amen. You've got a lot of free time. Find out how you can develop things in the software, uh, uh, software items and so that you can start your own business, e-business. Find out how you can do. First sell. Don't sell your father's car. That's a dangerous thing to do. Put thing, thing different things. Second-hand goods, baby, baby, baby items, children's items. Put it online. You'll be surprised. Are you listening? Go to France, buy a few bags and put, put the LV bag online. Are you listening? Yes. Talk to me. Are you listening? Yes. Hey, people are making money. Only you are laughing. They are laughing to the bank. You're only laughing at them. Hey, people are not ashamed if it's legitimate. But for us Christians, we have all kinds of restrictions. <coughs> people breed orchids. People breed orchids. They breed fish, breed dogs. For extra, they breed horses. Are you listening? Most of us only breathe. (laughs) Breathe is where the money is. Breathing is where the life is. You sustain your own life. But you're not making anything. You'd be surprised. You can design t-shirts. Design a wonderful, nice-looking t-shirt and put it online. You'll be surprised. Somebody will come. From Siberia, you'll get a call. They want that T-shirt. They saw the T-shirt and you designed it, put it on the website. You'd be surprised how much people are prepared to pay because it's boutique. You know there are rich people everywhere. There are crazy people too and they have money. (laughs) And you are crazy and not not crazy enough to get that money. And you just sit here and just laugh at everybody. They're the ones happy rushing to the bank, not you. Sometimes it irritates me for those who laugh at others who are doing things. I prefer them do things and get something on with life. It's better than robbing the bank, stealing somebody else's money. It's honest living. People are intelligent. Oh, why so expensive? So expensive. There are always people who want to buy cheap things in an expensive way. There are always people who want to do it. And somebody is making money out of them because that's the way they live. They like to buy a bag that is more expensive than everybody else so that they have something to talk about. Are you listening? And you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. It's there in the world. And that's how the world is. And if you put yourself in that kind of place, you you begin to see resources begin to flow. But, you know, I have no job. I'm just waiting for the Lord to provide. You know, I just, I talked to pastor. Pastor said he will see what he can do. And the pastor don't do anything. He said, I, t- I talked to the pastor. I don't know why he promised and he didn't keep his promise. I don't trust pastors. <laughs> After a short while, they leave your church and go somewhere else and ask the other pastor. The pastor said, yeah, we'll talk to the elders. Next committee meeting, we'll see what we can do. And then same thing happens. Who is going to support you? Because you don't even support yourself. Amen. Do something. Make something happen. Go, you know, find a small temporary license. Go sell some ice water. Go some sell some popcorn. Get, get somewhere. Go and do something. Rather than think the whole world owes you something. No, you don't. I went to look for copper wires. Look for dynamos that have been, you know, from the bicycle shop, from the motorcycle shop. Use a hammer and, and my father's screwdriver. Break it. Open. Take all the, take all the copper wire. Find bottles. f and bottles. Coke bottles. Wash them. Clean them. Sell it back to the shop. Hey. There's money selling newspaper. There's money selling aluminium, aluminium pots. In those days, we had aluminium pots. For some of you, you never heard aluminium pots ever before. But that's what we had. And they are expensive. 
and we, you sell them for scrape metal and begin to sell them. That's, that's money. For some of you who never had the choice to live this way, you are blessed. But you don't understand strategy like I do. Can find anything, can make, make it work. Anything. We used to catch fish from the, from, the, from the ponds, from the rivers, and sell it. When the, te- when the teacher said, okay, bring frogs, I brought five. I brought five and I sold the others. <laughs> Took one for myself, four the others I sold. More expensive than they sell in the shops. Why? Because they're desperate. The teacher is a serious teacher, a teacher that will cane all of them. So the price went up higher. The Lord shall provide. Frogs. He sent frogs to Egypt. I take the frogs from Egypt. From plague became blessing to me. Hey, you must be a master. You cannot tell me there's no way. There is a way. If there is a will, there is a way. If you want to get on to the next EYC, there is a way. Go wash some cars. You know, breed some rabbits. Rabbits are easy to breed too. Breed some rabbits. Are you listening? Talk to me, are you listening? Breed some fish. Do something. Do something about it. Design a t-shirt. Design a Formula One t-shirt. Put all some special design and buy some things. and buy, Get some stickers and work at it. Put it on the internet. You'll be surprised. Somebody is going to look at it. Because people are searching online all the time. And you'll be surprised if you, you have children and you have other things, the old, old antifacts and so on. You put it on, coins, whatever. Anything will go. Because people are looking. And if people want what you have, you have a market. Are you listening? If people have what you want and they want more of what you want, they have a business. Are you breathing? Don't tell me you cannot survive in this world. There are enough people who want what you got. You put it out, people want what you want. You really have a market open. If people are willing to pay for what you have and more people want it, then you have a business. Are you listening? If you start to grow it, you have an enterprise. Before long, you have your own industry to produce more and more of that. And you'll be surprised. You'll be so shocked that what you have is wanted in the world. You don't know until you put it out. You don't know whether the fish will bite until you put the bait into the water. And see, don't just sit there and say, I don't think there is any fish in the lake. How would you know? How come all the other people are fishing in the lake and you are not? How can they be fishing? Are they fools? They're not fools. They must have seen something you have not seen. Ah, there's no fish. That's strange. That's why Christians never find gold. Because they never dig it. Dig it deep enough, you'll find. Amen? Amen. Can you say amen to that? Every one of us have the dimension of God's call. Tonight when you come, I'm going to show you the the dimensions of the vocation. And then I'm going to take you towards destiny. How all of us must fulfill our call. All of us must be faithful in our vocation and all of us must make choices towards our destiny. Everything that we choose must be according to our destiny. People can offer you anything. People said, okay, look, I'll offer you this, I'll offer you. It's not the offer. It's where the offer will lead you. It will take you off course, you're in for trouble. Then you know the devil has offered these things. All right? Okay. God bless you. i see you this afternoon. If you can just grab your things on the way out because we